faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what you want from me. So take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. Take my heart. Take my. sacrifice that, that you gave for us up on that hill, O oh God, where you hung from that cross, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you that you took our sins upon yourself, O oh God, so that we could live, so that we could come to know you and have a relationship with you, O oh Father. And Father, we just thank you for doing that in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Let's worship Him for who He is and what He is. He died on a cross for our sins and His blood was shed so that we could have life and have life more abundantly. Let us not forget the cross and what it means to us as believers. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ and remember what the cross means to us. We want to move into a time of communion where we remember what Jesus Christ did for us. Let us now just, in a moment of quietness, just reach out to God and examine ourselves. As the word of God said that we should examine ourselves before we partake of the communion. Let's ask God to cleanse us and purify us from all sins. Sanctify us true and true. As we prepare our hearts to partake in communion which reminds us of what Jesus did for us. We serve an open communion, but we do ask that it's best that you be baptized and have a relationship with God as such. If there's any major things that you need to address, as the word of God said we should, And the word of God said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, I'm reading from, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus. On the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup, which is what we did, just did. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many among you are weak and sick 
and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we judge ourselves, we will not fall under judgment. For when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined, so that we will not be condemned with the world. And that is an awesome place to be, set apart from the world. This is why we are called believers and followers of Christ. And what the word of God is saying that we need to live in a manner of such where we can take this communion and be worthy of doing so. We should not do it in an unworthy manner. We would not be judged like the world, like the rest of the world. That is why we should not live like the rest of the world. And as the word of God said, he took the bread and broke it. I just want to say a word of prayer before we proceed. O oh God Almighty, O oh Father in heaven, O oh great and awesome God, we give you praise and we worship you and we honor you. We thank you for Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, and his body and blood, which was bruised and broken, so that we could have life, but not just any life, but a life in Christ, a life that is pleasing to you. I praise you and I thank you for each and every one of us this morning. Thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity and privilege, dear Lord God Almighty where we can partake of this communion, dear Lord, this bread and this juice that represents the body and blood of Jesus Christ. I pray, wonderful God, that we understand the significance of it. And we continue to live, dear Lord God Almighty, a pleasing and holy life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Could we just take out our bread? As we ask the Canaanal to ask God to bless this bread that represents the body of Jesus Christ. Let's pray, dear Father, we come before you thanking you for life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, we remember <coughs> that night where you said, this is my body, do it in remembrance of me. And Father, we thank you for your body, for you, almighty <coughs> Jesus, who died on the cross, who were bruised, who were battered beyond recognition, as your word tells us, to save us, a wretched people, so that you can have fellowship with us, almighty God. Thank you, Almighty God, for, for your Son who died on the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let us do this remembrance of him. Let us partake. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying... Can we have our cups prepared? This is the blood. This is my blood. And the new covenant. David. Thanks. Heavenly Father, thank you for the blood that you so gracefully and so lovingly shared on that cross for us, notwithstanding our sin and our iniquity, O oh God, which you took upon yourself so that we can be free and have salvation, O oh God. And I I pray that as we take this, we do it remembering all that love, all that mercy, all that grace of God, and that we don't do this as a joke, and we don't do it just as a ritual of God, but understanding the seriousness of what we're about to do in Jesus' name, with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Take this cup, which is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it. Let us drink. I pray that we totally understand the significance of what we do. And Jesus said, remember, let us please do not forget what he did for us. Every day as we live, as we wake up in the morning, we should pray, thanking God that we have life 
that we have health and that we have strength and that we could focus on doing his will. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, wonderful and merciful and great God. Thank you for everything that you have done and continue to do for us. I pray, wonderful God, that you help us never to forget what Jesus Christ did for us. Help us to keep remembering and focusing on him as we live our lives to become like him. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And we welcome pastor this morning as we prepare ourselves to hear the word of God. is holy. Amen. And the Bible tells us because he is holy and what he has done for us, he has clothed us in his righteousness. And therefore we stand perfect in him, not in ourselves this morning. And let us pray. Father, as I get into your word this morning, I pray your word will be rich. I pray we will appreciate the truths of your word. Minister to us thank you for those who have taken time to come to your house and I pray that they will receive in the name of Jesus even as we get ready for preparation of this year's ministry the word will be very applicable in Jesus name I pray and everybody say amen God bless you, you may be seated and so this morning I started a message last week talking about the righteousness of God. And I will connect what I am talking on. But what I want to share with you is really um, preparation for the ministries this year. Preparation of the ministries this year. And um, the book that we are looking at is, of course, uh, First Peter. And the man who wrote it is Peter. And we were talking here about being, being spirit-led. This is what the old theme says. But the spirit of the Lord has to continue to lead us. All right? And then we are also asked to be holy. 
You can leave that. Thanks. And we ask to be holy. And this morning, people have these funny ideas as to what is holiness. But we started talking about that. And we looked at Isaiah, exactly that song that Kimberly led a short while ago. It's taken from Isaiah. And we understand that God is so holy. So much so that I want to pick up on the point where before Isaiah could say, here I am, Lord. Before he could say that, he had an encounter with the Lord. And I am praying. I am praying as we start this year of ministry to say, here I am. Before you are presented this year, just like Isaiah, you would have an understanding of what this holiness is all about. And to help you to understand that, the best person to look at is the man, Simon Peter. And I want to share with you from Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, the first 11 verses of Scripture, Luke chapter 5. And we want to just spend a few moments on that and talking about his encounter with the Lord. Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. And I trust that we can write so we can get it on the scripture on the board this morning. And the Bible says, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. They were doing what? Listening. Say it out loud. They were listening to the word of God. That's very good. So we continue. Verse 2. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Continue. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. In other words, don't stay on the shore where you will just be mending nets. You have more work to do. Push out into the deep. And then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Before we turn to the next verse, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Don't stay on the shore. Put out, thrust out. Verse 5. Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, but because, say it with me, you, Jesus, say so, I will let down the nets. Now, before you turn, um, Samara, let me read back that verse because this forms a very critical part of the message. You see, the Simon, Peter, had toiled all night, all night, and had taken nothing, caught nothing. But because Jesus said so, in obedience, he, loved, he let down his nets. What happened when Simon did that? Verse 6. When they had done so, remember that, verse 6, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish, that, that their, their nets, nets began, began to break. break. Verse 7. seven. So, so they, they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and to help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. So much blessing. Verse 8. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Just hold it right there. And this is exactly a similar experience that Isaiah had when we talk about the holiness of God. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. I will elaborate, but let's continue. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. And then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. This morning, 
as we prepare ourselves to get involved in ministry for this year, there are a few things that I want you to understand. And I pause in the narrative to remember some of those so that if you look back again at verse 4, I think you understand the scenario. Peter, the man who wrote First and Second Peter and who we are talking about um, being led by the Spirit and to be holy and so on. The Bible says in verse 4, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out your put out into the water and let your net down for a scotch. Now, this is Jesus speaking to Simon. And what I am telling you this morning, it is understanding that we have to acknowledge God's word. If ever we want to be effective in this year's ministry, we want to acknowledge God's word. And that goes along with what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 2, desire what? Anybody? Desire the? Desire the? Sin oh, look at Sage, you know. Desire the? Sincere milk of God's word. Amen? So the first thing that we need to do is acknowledge his word. I don't want to repeat a whole set of stuff, but I deliberately left this year so that we can remember how we need to acknowledge God's word. What's the first thing we need to do? Everybody? Everybody can see it? No? But you don't remember it. First of all, when the word of God is preached, or when this man is preaching, or Jesus is speaking, put out your net into the deep. This is Jesus' word. Peter had to receive that word. All right? All right? This, this is, is all, all to deal, deal with, with acknowledgement or acknowledging God's word. All right? Acknowledging God's word. So that's the first thing we want to talk about this morning. Acknowledging God's word. All right? Acknowledgement. So the first thing you do is you receive. And then what we tell people, the second leaf you could see there, you need to what? Read. All right? You need to read. So, as we say them, I'm going to take it off. Do you not, number one, you need to receive. Secondly, you need to read. And thirdly, you need to, okay, research. Study to show yourself approved unto God so you can rightly divide the word of truth. Okay, I'm taking it off, so I'll quiz you on it after, all right? Re receive, read, research. Then the other thing you need to do is remember. Very good. Remember and review. Very, very good. And then this business of preaching God's word, reading God's word, will all be useless until we respond. Did Peter respond? Did Peter respond? Yes. Peter responds. So you need to acknowledge God's word. And when God gives a directive, we need to do all fives. Let's, let's go, go through it again. Number one, you need to receive God's word. Receive God's word. When the pastor or preacher comes here, receive God's word. When you, um, well, the second point is read, but when you read, you receive it because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So you receive, you read. The third one is you research because in our first reading, you may not get it, but you need, the Bible says you need to study. The Bible says you need to meditate, yes? And you need to delight yourself in the word of God. Psalm, 100, um, Psalm 1, day and night, continuously. And then the next thing you need to do is what? Remember. Don't forget. Because if you forget, it's going to be useless. Because when um, a situation comes, fear comes, um, doubt comes, uh, whatever, whatever might come your way, praise God as you look to God this year. You will remember his words. That is why we were told in Deuteronomy that, you know, the fathers especially were given the challenge to um, uh, do certain things in putting the, the word of God around their children's 
forehead and, 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 and the doorposts and so on so that we can remember God's word. And then one of the beautiful things that we can do in order to accomplish it, we need to respond. So desire God's word. Desire God's word. So the first thing that he did, Peter did, is he acknowledged. There was an acknowledgement of God's word. And then we look now at verse number six. Verse number six. Now remember what went on with this acknowledgement. When Peter saw what was happening after toiling all night, humanly possible, do you think from a human standpoint he would have gotten fish? Yes or no? From a human standpoint. Remember he had toiled all night and had taken nothing, right? Do you think from a human standpoint if he would have tried again, minus God's word, would he have gotten anything? No. And that is the problem why sometimes we fail in our ministry. That is why we fail in our lives. Because we try in our own human strength. Come on. And we fail. We fail to acknowledge God's word. But the point, the second point I want to share with you is what happened in verse number six. When Peter listened to God's word, despite the circumstances, it was contrary. Yes? No fish. Toil all night. He could have said, Jesus, I am the fisherman here. But Jesus is the master. Amen. He's the Lord. He knows. All right? So therefore you need, you see, your holiness is not playing man or playing that you know it. It's to acknowledge despite your circumstances. I don't care what people tell you. I don't care what the doctor tell you. I don't care what this one tell you. No, I'm not saying, no, take the doctor's report. But whose report you're going to believe? When circumstance seems different to um, what we normally believe from a human standpoint, God is able. I said God is able. God is able to take a barren womb, amen, and in the name of Jesus, make it fruitful. He did it, Amen. He did it for Hannah. He did it for Sarah. God is able. I'm saying what is biologically um, impossible. God is able to do abundantly more than we can even ask or think. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know what challenges you will feel that your ministry might bring this year. But I want you to depend on God and acknowledge his word. Could somebody say amen? Number two. The second thing that he did is that when they had done so. So you see, the, you see that point there? When they had done, it means, secondly, there was accomplishment. I-S-H. Accomplishment. Accomplishment. Acknowledgement. Accomplishment. In other words, what I am telling you this morning, it's one thing to say, I hear God's word. I might read God's word. I might even remember it. But the Bible says, when they had done. Obedience is extremely important. How often we hear about God's truth? How often? And to put into practice what God says is a difficult thing. Because you have an enemy who wants to devour you. There is a mindset that is against God's nature. And all these factors against you. And one of the easiest things to do is to say, humanly speaking, I can't do it. Thank God for Peter. Could somebody say amen? I said thank God for Peter because the Bible says in that verse here, when they had done so. In other words, despite the opposition uh, uh, despite the logic, despite all those things, Peter uh, said, Lord, if you say so, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down thy neck. I want God's people this morning to have enough faith to believe in God. Amen, somebody. And you know, people talk about faithfulness, eh? or faith. But I believe you will start seeing faithfulness in people when they apply faith in their lives. Because you see, if I have faith in God, I will be faithful to the things of God. 
show me a faithless person and I will show you a person who is not willing to do the will of the Father. But when you get into that understanding and appreciation of God, and I said, despite my circumstances, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust in God. I will believe him. I will respond to his promise. I will respond. I will do what God says. They had done so. When that happens, blessings will come in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says, and when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish, their net began to break. Do you believe this morning that God is able? You believe that? You know, one of the things we preachers have to do is use illustrations. And I, I, I feel if I open it up for a time of sharing now, just to share on that point, many of you will say how God has ministered. How God has ministered. And probably, you know, but in sharing time, what we should more center in on, on is the goodness of God, the blessing of God, what he has done. You sit here in a building where there, there was at one point in time that people were saying, villagers were saying, the village council back then was saying, we couldn't do it. But we believe God and he says that we could do it. Amen. And we believe God. We trust God. We labored. We built. And we have this building here. That is just one example. That God is able to provide. Amen somebody. People say there will never be a church in this area. But thank God for his goodness. And thank God for those who stood with us. And who worked with us. And who believed God with us. And I am telling you here this morning. That my God is able. He is able to do abundantly more than we can even ask or think. What is this morning your challenge, either in life or ministry that you might foresee, that seems so challenging? I was preaching um, in Jerningham this last week, and I was telling the folks there about um, the promised land. It wasn't easy. It was a challenge because you, you had problems without, meaning you had giants and you had um, wall fortified city, but you had problems within because the people... Because of the negative report, they felt that they couldn't make it. And the Bible says the whole community were wailing in the book of Numbers chapter 13, if you're familiar with this story. It was negative. But thank God for men like Joshua and Caleb, who said, Caleb said at 85 years, give me this mountain. I pray God that you this year, as you start your ministry, will say, God, give me the mountain. Amen. They might not want to do it. They might not want to teach. They might want to join a committee. They might not want to serve. But Lord, I am willing. Amen, somebody. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Use me for your glory. Use me for your honor. Amen, somebody. And this morning, when they had done so, the blessings came. I am here to tell you, some are not receiving blessings because they are not obedient to the word of God. I want to tell you, conversely, when you obey God's word, when you do his will, the blessings will follow. And that is what happened here. So I have to move on. And then Peter saw this great miracle. And he did something very strange, as we read in verse number 9. There was so much fish, blessings came that the boat began to sink. And the Bible says in verse 8, and when Peter saw it, when Peter saw it, he said, what did he say? What did he say? Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. You know what Peter did there? I would have mentioned it probably a couple of times, but because we are in ministry and because before Isaiah say, here I am in Isaiah chapter 6. Peter was now about to embark on ministry, public ministry. Jesus was going to say, Peter, you are going to now be a fisher of, my, of men. And what we need to do before we could go out this year into ministry, listen to me very carefully. You miss this, you're going to miss your ministry and you're going to miss the, this message and preparation for what you have to go we need to discover God's holiness. You see our daily frustration, society pressures, 
and our shortcomings reduce and narrow our view of God. Listen to me carefully. We need to discover God's holiness. But the more clearly we experience the power of God, as Peter did here, the more aware he became of his own powerlessness and inadequacy to do anything of lasting value. When Peter saw this great miracle, he saw the hand of God. You want people to start getting holy? Just let them have a vision of God. You know why people remain nominal Christians, probably sinning their whole life? Is they don't experience the power and the awesome uh, 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 glory of God. But when you spend time in God's word, when you spend time in prayer, and God gave you a revelation and an experience, and all you could do when you reach out to God is bow before him in his holiness because of what he has done and what he continues to do, the only thing you can see and recognize is your unworthiness, but his goodness. I don't know if I'm making sense to you. See, when Peter saw what Jesus did for him, he realized as great as a fisherman he was, as great as he was in his own flesh, it was nothing compared to the greatness of God. You know what's the problem today? You know what's the problem today? We like to hold on to our achievement our human abilities, our own accomplishments, and feel that we are great. And that is why sometimes we can't move in faith. Because we probably have enough that we don't have to rely on God. And sometimes it is good when God tugs at us and he takes certain things from us and he disciplines us so that all we can do is turn to him. I pray we don't have to reach to that state. That we, in our disobedience and our lack of faith, we, we, we have to go through a situation. Now, I'm not saying all situations are disciplinary and judgment of God. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying this morning, it is high time that people of God recognize the power of Almighty God. My God, we come to church every Sunday and we hear songs that are being led in the power of the Spirit of God. Do you acknowledge God? Do you see His greatness? When you get up this in the morning, do you take time to acknowledge that He woke you up this morning? I was doing a Thanksgiving service yesterday and I was telling people, we have to be thankful, thankful for His goodness, His love, His mercy, His salvation. His blessing. I think what we do is take it for granted. When God's moral perfection is properly seen, it will purify us from and cleanse our mind from our problems and enable us to worship and to serve. Simon Peter was awestruck at this miracle and his first response was to feel his insignificance in comparison to Jesus' greatness. I think people have to experience the power of God. And you ask, but pastor, why are we not doing it? Because we are not yielding ourselves. Here was a man who took time and recognized and said, Lord, although I, am, I have ability, I can I cannot, I cannot do your work and do the ministry and receive your blessing unless I depend on you. My inadequacy, my sinfulness, my failure, but God's greatness. God's greatness. God's greatness. And here's an important point here before I move on. He was amazed. Now, this was Peter's livelihood. Eh? I want you to understand this point. When you leave here today, you are going to get into the rut of working. You have to face your um, challenges in your job. Some of you would have to go home. There might be challenges there. I trust not that you'll depend on God. But you will have those challenges 
on a daily basis in some cases. But what Peter was amazed with is that Jesus cared about his day-to-day -day routine and understand his needs, saving him and caring for him in his daily activities. This was the man's livelihood, man. You know, after that incident, Peter would never be the same again. Every time he go to cast his net or to his hook, he was a, he was a, a deep sea man. And he threw out his net. He would remember the goodness of God. He would remember that it is God's hand. When you go to work tomorrow and when you get your pay, do you recognize God's goodness? That he gave you the strength to work so that you can accomplish something, so that you can return, give back something to the kingdom of God? I know we're always quiet, but are we getting more quiet this morning? Are you understand what I'm saying? Understand, appreciate, recognize the power and the majesty of God. This is holiness to the core. This was Peter having a time when he recognized his nothingness and God's holiness. This morning we cannot accomplish a lot when we push ourselves. Uh, John the Baptist says, you know, in order for God to increase, I must decrease. And when we are so full of ourselves, with all that we possess, you know, I have nothing against people having things. Eh? Those things, boy. Those things. And we feel good about it. That's my job. That's my land. The deed is in my name. I drive this car. There is that feeling of achievement. And nothing is wrong with I like ambitious people. But you know you had, we had to start saying, without God, I would not be where I am. Could somebody say amen this morning? I said, without God, you wouldn't have a job. Without God, you wouldn't have the health and strength and the breath in your body. Why do you not take time to acknowledge him, to thank him, to worship him? That is what Peter was doing. Recognize his holiness. I preached yesterday on the ten lepers. Ten got healed. Only one had the courtesy, appreciation, love for God to say, I want to worship him. If I use those statistics, only one-tenth of people who have the blessings of God take time to turn back to worship God. Are you in the 90% who live and go your own merry way? Take God's blessing and his healing and his goodness and then you have no time for God? Or are we going to pause and say, God, you are the great, mighty, powerful one. The mere fact that you are here this morning is a good sign that you say, I want to. The, the, the mere fact that you are going to have put up your name to say, I want to serve this year in 2023 is saying, Lord, I appreciate you. I want to put my hands to the plow. God bless you. And my challenge, as I've always been, for those of you who are not yet involved, is to see that God could use you as he used Peter. Amen? God could use you. And we, and, and we have service for the kingdom of God. So we had acknowledgement of God's word, accomplishment, assessment. Well, here is where it, where it's get, where it's get to the, the, the rubber meets the road. Verse number 10. G, the latter part. Verse 10. Verse 10. So were James and John, the sons of Debbie, Simon's brother, uh, partners. And then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we have an assignment. Amen? I said we have work to do. Monroe Road Evangelical Bible Church is committing to demonstrate his love for God by reaching the lost. Amen. We have an assignment. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. We have work to do. God has been good to us. The least we can do. Come on, the least we can do. 
preferably by our life, but also with our words, is tell people of the goodness of God. Peter was on fire when he had a revelation how this God is. He, Peter was a unique man, you know. He told Jesus a day when people were asking him, who do you say that I am? He says, you are the son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood had not revealed that, that to you. And you know what needs to happen in our lives has ha happened with Peter? Yes, Peter had his downtime. Eh? We all have our downtimes. But please, pay attention. Listen to the voice of God. Here he's telling us this morning, you have work to do. We're going to put our hands to the plow. Don't leave it for a few to do. God has called us into ministry. Amen. We have an assignment. Stay faithful to your assignment. God is going to use you. He's, he showed Peter that, listen, I am in charge. I can handle your stories. If you feel that you ain't going to catch enough fish, I will be there to provide for you. Amen, somebody. He's going to be the strength. He is going to be our helper. He is the paraclete, the Holy Spirit that is going to be helping us. No wonder he says, fear not. What are you afraid of? Taking up a responsibility? We need some people in the back there to handle the online ministry. We need people to usher. We need people to serve. We need people on the men's committee, ladies' committee. We need people to assist in Sunday school. What is your fear this morning? For an assignment that will... Take on some responsibility. Jesus told Peter, we have work to do. I said we have work to do. Amen. Why? Night will soon come. And while it is still day, he says we have work to do. We have an assignment. So here's what I'm going to tell you to do. Let's get cracking. Amen. The announcer will tell you this Tuesday we start back our cell meetings. Get, get, get cracking. And from these meetings, what you will do is invite people. You will invite people to the meetings. You will invite people to the church. Every end of every month, we will have a visitation program. We'd love to come to talk to you. Amen. Or to your friends. Or people who don't know Jesus. Why? Because Jesus says, from now on, we have work to do. And it's not about fish alone. It's not about the fish you will catch. It's not about your livelihood alone. It's not about just the physical needs. We are going to catch men. And what does he mean? He means that as much as fish was needed for his physical intake and for his upkeep and for his livelihood, the kingdom of God, gee, God so loved the world, amen, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe, we have to help in sharing the gospel so we can at least give persons a chance to believe. How will they hear without a preacher? How will they hear? We say faith comes by hearing. How will they hear? We have to tell them. We have assignment to do. But in closing, in closing, there are certain things in our lives. If holiness has to be the name of the game. We have to abandon certain things in our lives. Abandonment. When Peter heard that call in his life, listen to me very carefully. Verse number 11. And when they had pulled up on the shore, next word, next couple of words, what the Bible says. Everybody. So when they pulled their boats up on the shore, what happened after that? They left everything and followed him. Now I know some of you are starting to get frightened. Say, Pastor, oh, you want me to leave my work? Pastor, you want me to do this? Yes, if God calls you, yeah, you do it. Amen. Take your choke. Did you just gulp? I said, if God calls you, he will provide for you. Amen. You know, all the song like you have faith that God could do that. But obviously, in the kingdom of God, we need funds to run the church. And God didn't call everybody to be full-time. So you are blessed to work so you can enjoy life, but to give back to the kingdom of God. Amen, somebody? Are you a good giver to the kingdom of God? I didn't come to preach on giving, but as we're talking about livelihood, you know what I mean? 
You, you're a full-time in ministry, you're working, the least we can do is help the work go on here. Amen. Right. But you know, God may not call you to leave your job. But he calls you to abandon those things that are coming between you and him. Does that make sense? I said, God is calling you to abandon. When I say abandon, I mean get rid of, throw away. Okay, if you want to use that, leave it. But I don't want to leave it, throw it away. Bury it. Amen. And that could come in all form or fashion. It could be an attitude. It could be a behavioral pattern. It could be a physical thing. Huh? Because you see, if Peter had held on to his net, God would not have used him to go into the world to preach the gospel. So God was saying to him, Peter, I thank God for your acknowledgement. I thank God for your accomplishment as I help you. I thank God you could have assessed yourself and recognized I am God. I thank you that you understood your assignment. But with the assignment comes the abandonment of things that will prevent you from serving God effectively. I don't know what you have to abandon this morning. I told certain people, you see that person you're living with there? No, not living with, sorry. You see that person you're going along with? You might have to abandon that. You see that habit you have? You might have to abandon it. Are you with me? You see that language you use? It's not a testimony for God. You might have to, not might, you have to change it. Because after all, this message is on holiness. Amen, somebody. And how I speak, how I carry about myself will reflect the holiness of God. I am his representative. I am his ambassador. I want to do his will. So this morning, are you ready to do his work? Amen. The brother is going to come. And he is going to tell you about the different ministries and who are the personnel. But let us not only think about those whose name will be called. This message is for every one of you this morning. Every one of you. That God will use you, even though your name will not be called this morning. Although you did not put up your name for service in 2023. God is willing to take you. Mold you and shape you. Acknowledge his word. Accomplish what he has asked you to do with his strength. Make an assessment. Do the assignment. And abandon what is keeping you from the kingdom of God. God bless you richly.